wishing to speak in a, to uh, opposition, you can please come to the mic, name, address. My name is Buddy Bumgarner. I live at 4250, Highway 122 East. Mine's not so much a pro or con against it. I guess my question is, how many residents does R15 put on 56 acres or 58 acres that they're trying to do? Has, has that number come up? Because that would be a concern, I would think, for most people is, what's the impact on people? But from what I could tell, and this is the first meeting I've heard on it, is there's nothing sketched out to determine that, to give any direction to the council, to me, give any guidance. And I'm just trying to learn from that. Has there been any kind of indication as to the number of residents that can be built under R15? All questions will be addressed at the end. Just you know, okay. not having a question and answer. Okay. I, I guess my question is to determine whether that is an appropriate with a no, nothing really hanging. And I heard one of the comments made. I believe by Mr. Park was, or maybe it came out of their discussion was, what's the urgency or the need to do it today or now? There's not a plan on the table. Just, a, just a question I have. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Scott Purvis. I live at 14 North Church Street. First of all, let me say I'm representing myself. I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone else, organization, or agency. Um, I do want to voice my opposition to this rezoning and annexation. First of all, as we said tonight, there is no plan. You bring this property in, and no matter what you rezone it, you can walk right through the conservation easement and the applicant plant a subdivision tomorrow if they choose to. There's no real plans on this. If you look at it, while this boundary meets the letter of the law, it certainly does not meet the spirit of the law when you move the boundary 210 feet just to make sure that the county has no impact. Nobody has asked what impact it is for the city of Ahira. We've not talked about any infrastructure that would have to go out there not talked about water and sewer, we've not talked about density because we have no plan. There's folks who already live out in the county that have built nice homes, they put an investment out there. We who live in the city of Hay Howard do not wish the county to impact us, and I think it should be vice versa also that we shouldn't do things in the city to adversely affect those who live joining us out in the county. Also, Bottom line is, housing is not economic development, it's community development. Housing affects the cost of community services. If you look for every dollar of taxes a house brings in, more than a dollar goes back out in ex city expenses to it. The smaller the home, the less value, and more city expenses go to it. So I would ask that the council take the planning commission's recommendations deny the same exception. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? My name is uh, Ray Parker. I live at 6677 Hagen Ridge Road. Uh, somebody may know me, somebody may not. Uh, I'm your love for UPS driver. And as you've heard through several comments, you've heard the logistics, you've heard the infrastructure, you've heard other things. I've, <clears throat> I've heard where uh, the infrastructure there, Miss Mother's Day here, Santa's having trouble. I've heard up several of my friends say they had trouble with the infrastructure. Uh, and that's a concern, not only to people in the city limits, but to people like me that drive UPS trucks. One thing that I want to bring before I, I, I say this is that one thing I haven't heard from anybody that's real dear to my heart is the safety aspect of building 
X number of mile houses in that vicinity. Now I've heard several rumors about 200 houses. I've heard rumors of four houses per acre. Nobody knows because there's no planning like, like uh, the sir said before. Uh, and I'm gonna reiterate why it's the rush. But the safety aspect of it is real important to me because I'm a UPS driver. That's instilled in me from the day one at UPS. For some reason, and I don't know if y'all have ever been out there, but Hagen Bridge Road, the dirt road part of Hagen Bridge Road is a playground for people in the city limits of Hagar. I've been living there for 20 years. I lived seven years before that in uh, Stockton, Georgia with my wife, where she's from. And before that, I was a resident of Hayhire, Georgia for however many years that is, about 51. I played on that dirt road when I was coming up. It was a thing to do when you lived in the city of Hayhire. But now the problem I have with it is in the 20 years I've lived on that dirt road, there's been seven accidents. Now, if you want to put in a percentage, that don't seem like a lot. But that's seven too many if you ask a UPS driver. Unfortunately, the last accident we had resulted in a fatality. And the reason why it happened was because there was kids from the city of Ahar playing on that dirt road. Now, if you send this to annexation of the city of Ahar, and the rumors come true that's been brought about by 240, 300 houses out there, the possibility of an accident happening on Hayden Bridge Road in front of my house goes up 100%. Y'all, I don't want to be woke up at my house at 2.30 in the morning again with four teenagers or 20-year-olds, youth, ejected from that car in my yard and having to get emergency personnel. Now, my time's up. We do want to give this petition of names against what's going on, and I do please consider, ask you to please consider denying this annexation. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition?
We don't have the sewer and the water since Christ that we need in the house. We need to look at what we've got. We've got empty houses. We've got about 15 subdivisions. We like to say there's no money coming from them. Okay? And I've got about, got about nine people right in the city of Hayhire that's against it. And I'm against it because I'm in the livestock business and I've got stuff out there that I work for. And I'm not going to call it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak again? Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak against? Mr. Mayor, my name is Roger Christie and I live at 524 South Haven Ridge Road. I didn't come over here and plan to speak, I just came to listen. And I want it to be made perfectly clear that I'm speaking for myself personally. Uh, as a citizen of the city of Bay Highland. Eight years ago, my wife and I bought uh, the house that we live in in Bay Highland. She works at the school. It was closed for her. And most of my decision was based on the fact I had always lived in South Lambs County, on a farm in the county, and never lived in the city before in my life. My decision was based on the fact that, yes, this is a small town, a community, uh, basically a family community. And, you know, I, I had concerns about the annexation and about the 
be uh, rezoning, especially when I heard it was R10, because you can put anything in there R10 uh, beyond mobile home. So I was concerned. I, I feel better that, that we're talking about R15. But I still think that, you know, that we've, we've gotten to look at the, I hear a lot about the infrastructure. Uh, I've seen the war problems that we have in Ahira. Uh, and, and what happens when you add more houses to the pipes that you have, uh, it takes less rain to start popping those manhole covers up like they're doing on six or nine inches of rain now. The more housing you put in there, the less the, that rain is going to shrink. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come down small. Uh, but, but I like, you know, I like the hometown, the small hometown, and, and I know you can't stop growth. I understand that. We don't grow, uh, but I think we can control it. And I urge you to consider that, okay? Thank you. Anyone else to speak against? Anyone else want to speak against? Last call. Okay, we'll uh, entertain questions from the council. Simply divide by 10,000 or 15,000. 
the numbers we gave you for comparison under R10, um, you could estimate, I underscore the word estimate, 175 lots. And under R15, that would reduce to about 115 lots. But that is an estimate that would go up or down depending on the layout, depending on what the average lot size actually ends up being. Um, you could just about consider that the worst case scenario in terms of, or the maximum scenario in terms of the number of lots. But that's based on the total acreage of the property. Um, I guess then this is a, like I said, a gross estimation, but one of the ones uh, economic developers have always used is 2.7 persons per household. Would that be reasonable to assume? 2.7 sounds a little high to me for Haywire's demographics. Um, I would think more like 2.4, 2.5. So 2.4, you're talking 276 people. That's just that's an that's estimate. estimate. But it's an estimate. As far as the urgency, is there any sense of urgency associated with the application? Or? Well, they, their proposal is to um, establish it with residential zoning for future development. Um, they have not presented an engineered plan. Um, my assumption is they are, have at least a draft that they're working amongst themselves, um, but they're not ready to come forward. Keep in mind, too, that this property went through a change in its acreage and its description. When the county raised their objection, one of the primary concerns was access to North Haven Bridge Road, which is an unpaved road. Um, the applicants responded by reducing the acreage of the proposal, and hence that 210-foot gap along North Haven Bridge. I know there was some discussion from the audience about this subdivision accessing that road. Um, the subject property does not front North Haven Bridge at all. It is actually 210 feet away, and the county maintains control and authority over access to that road anyway. The subject property does have frontage and access onto George 122, and that would be their main point of access. And this is kind of related to that, but as far as the safety is concerned with having access off of 122, what, if any, considerations were done in the analysis have there been? Anything to your knowledge as far as traffic impacts? Right. In terms of numbers, the, the development, even at those numbers, is not large enough to require a traffic study um, or other things where you would look at road improvements to the state highway, signalization, things of that nature. Um, but as part of any review process, it will at least get looked at and probably determined how applicable. Keep in mind, it's by granting an annexation of rezoning, it's not carte blanche to do whatever you want. There are guidelines regardless. If the property were already in the city and say zoned R15, a developer could develop it according to R15 standards, whatever those turn out to be in terms of design. There's a multitude of ways to design a piece of property this size. But you're still held to those minimum standards. 15,000 or 10,000 square feet, house size 1,500 square feet. As far as why it's wanted, that's really a question for the council, isn't it? Or is there anything that you would have to? I am not aware of any motivations on the part of the applicant other than the desire annexation for city services. Um, for development of this density, 10,000 or 15,000 square foot lots, it is very difficult to do that or expensive to do that without a municipal water and sewer system. That's all I have there. Okay. Councilman, do you have a question? Two? Yeah, um, I think I'll be pretty brief. Um, as Councilman and then mentioned a couple of things that I agree with. Uh, I think that the I think that the issue here tonight, the biggest issue is that uh, is that there's a lack of information <coughs> provided to the public to understand the real impact of what this would be to the city. Um, and I can understand that because there are a lot of questions that are unanswered. Uh, Councilman Glendennan mentioned a couple of them, so I hope that this, I'm just going to reiterate that real quick. Our water, that's not an issue at all. Uh, the sewer, that's really not an issue. However, with the caveat that he mentioned, there are some issues uh, with piping and drainage that need to be fixed because a lot of the underground water is seeping into our sewage system and taking away some of our capacity. Without that problem, uh, there would be no problem. 
That's the way I understand it, anyway. It, it probably needs to be studies or some something looking into that a little, somebody looking into that a little bit more in depth to find out the exact impact of that groundwater taking up some of our sewer capacity. So I agree with Councilman Clinton on that as well. Uh, and I think that fair to be repeated because that's something that just about everybody that stood up and talked said something, or several of you mentioned that we were not ready for annexation because of those reasons, partially. And uh, I, I hope that answers some of your questions if this is brought up again in the future. Uh, I'm not as concerned about that because of the information that I've found out during the process of this as some of you are, but that's simply because, like I said, you were uninformed, you weren't given the information that you need to understand the impact. Um, I think that the future of AHARA, in some part, in some part, will rely, uh, the growth and the future of AHARA in some part will rely on eventual will need eventual annexation. Um, however, the application that's before us tonight is, in my opinion, not complete. Uh, we're not in that. There are too many questions about what the layout's going to look like. And I'll say it straight out. I don't like the R10. People, uh, that's, uh, uh, sorry. People already know that. Uh, but. My whole point is this, and I'll conclude. I think that we do need annexation. It needs to be done in the right way. Uh, and if this can, perhaps this, you know, some repairs can be made, some studies can be done, some more information can be put out, and this can be brought up again in the future uh, with proper annexation planning and with an R15 at least zoning. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, um, uh, disappointed a lot. I'm disappointed more than I am torn. And the reason I'm disappointed are, is, is that uh, uh, I agree with uh, several things that have been said. Number one, as a person who tries not to live in the moment and making decisions like this, because I think the moment, living in the moment, sometimes can make you make decisions that probably, long term, you wish you could look back and say, you know, that's something different. Um, so you try to make decisions like this based on the future. And for the future, I saw this as an opportunity for a higher for the future. If done right, if communicated properly, there's no doubt that sooner or later, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, hey, Hira, uh, will need growth, need an area to grow. And that would be a great location for a car to grow. It would. But as we've heard tonight, one of the responsibilities I think that you have in annexing properties, and again, I've, I've been on city councils, I've served on city councils and other other communities. I think one of the responsibilities of people wanting to bring their properties into your city is to garner public support for that. And the way you garner public support is to take the information out there so that there is no misinformation about what your intent is. And that's what we don't have tonight. Now, the, the, the biggest disappointment I have, and I came here really open to maybe um, consider some other options here, but based on the fact that, and folks, you got to know, I, I taught Fred Weatherington in my when I was when I was high I love him to death. I love Fred. Great young man, very accomplished. It disappoints me that the person who owns the property is not here to represent his purpose for wanting to bring this property into the city. 
And to me, I've got to hear from that person. I've got to hear that person. A lot of questions that were asked tonight could have been answered by the person who will eventually 